Our God is mighty and wonderful. Amen. Mighty God, we thank you. We thank you again for you alone are God and you alone can do what you do. No one else but you can do the things you do. And we know that you are God because of your doings. We know that you are the God of heaven and earth because of the power in your name. Father, we say thank you. You are faithful. You are the covenant keeper. Wonderful Father, because you are the covenant keeper, your children have come to listen to you. Because you are the covenant keeper, your children have come, O oh God, to pay homage to you, Amen. to worship you, Amen. to honor your precious name, Amen. to say, Lord, you are God, the God of life, the, the, the God whose words are spirit and life. Amen. Your children have come to consume your word, Amen. to take in the spirit, Amen. your spirit, and to take in life. Amen. So, Father, give them the life Amen. in Jesus' name. Give them life, my Father, that they will be healthy and that they will live. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 The Bible says, on that day, Jesus asked his disciples to go with him to the other side. And I hope you know that these disciples were not waiting. They didn't know that one day Jesus would tell them to go with him to the other side. And that is how God operates. Hallelujah. Amen. They didn't know that Jesus was going to ask them to go with him to the other side. But abruptly one day Jesus just asked them, let's get into the boat and go to the other side. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus knows the time you are supposed to be on each side of life. Jesus knows when you are supposed to be on this side and when you are supposed to be on the other side. Praise God. Amen. Jesus knows when you are supposed to spend sleepless nights and when you are supposed to sleep like a river. Nobody knows it this time. Jesus knows the time you are supposed to be on your knees crying and the time for you to answer, to receive answers to the prayers. Yeah. He knows all that. Yeah. And so he doesn't have to tell you the day and the time he's coming to answer you. He doesn't have to tell you the hour he's coming to give you the answers. Your duty is to pray. Your duty is to ask. Amen. Your duty is to supplicate him. Amen. And his duty is to answer. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. So this day came and Jesus said, let's go to the other side. And they got into the boat. And they were going to the other side. Praise the Lord. Amen. They got into a boat that was transporting them to the other side. And on the way... A storm came up. Remember, the storm represents many things. It represents obstacles. It represents barriers. It represents limitations. It represents enemies. It represents adversaries. It represents people fighting you. Praise the Lord. Amen. It represents people who want to take you down. Amen. That is the storm. Amen. We heard about Zacchaeus. That Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus, but there was a kind of storm that stood before him. That storm was crowds, tall people. They stood before him just to prevent him from seeing Jesus Christ. He used another way. We know about Nicodemus, who wanted to see Jesus and confess to him that Jesus Christ, you are Lord, you are God. But because of the Pharisees, because of this position. And let me tell you, there are many people who will not come to Christ because of their positions in the society, because of their positions among their friends. They know that Jesus Christ is there, Jesus is Lord. But what about my friends? If I become born again today, what will my friends say? Oh, you've joined those people, you've been deceived, you've been this, you've been that. Many people want to become believers, but they cannot because of their surrounding. Brothers and sisters, Nicodemus had this problem. His surroundings, teachers of the law, Pharisees, were going to prevent him from going to Jesus Christ. But he chose the night time and visited Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says at night, John chapter number 3, 
he went to Jesus Christ and began to talk with Jesus, began to reason with Jesus. So on this day, as they were going to the other side, just like Jesus Christ, just like the Lord God has said, there is time for you to move to the other side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do not bother. That is taking too long on this side. We were just studying wait in our Bible class. Delay and patience. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do not bother. Do not worry yourself. Do not get into desperation. That I'm taking too long on this side. When will I go to the other side? No. Even the position you now occupy, you did not know that you'll be there. The author and finisher of your destiny knew that you'll be in this position. So the next position you are going to enter into, you need not know about it. You need just understand that there is another side for you. Amen. There is another level for you. Amen. There is another status for you. Amen. There is another rank for you. Amen. There is another title for you. Amen. You just need to know that. The one who works it out is called Jesus Christ. Amen. And he knows when and how to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jesus told them, let's go to the other side. And there was a storm, a storm that came to stop them from going to the other side. I want to tell you, storms will come. Amen. Storms will come. Amen. But you will get to the other side all the same. Amen. Storms will come. Amen. And the aim of the storm is to stop you from getting to the other side. But because of Jesus in the boat, that is why we must have Jesus Christ in our boat. Never you ride without Jesus Christ. Never you drive without Jesus Christ. Never you go to bed without Jesus Christ. Amen. Never you start work without Jesus Christ. Don't enter your classroom without Jesus Christ. You need to move with Jesus in your boat. Because Jesus is that resource. He's that solution. Oh, I was telling you about the lesson I learned. That each time you call the name of Jesus, you are combining the power, the authorities of heaven with those of the earth together. Every time you say Jesus Christ, this is the amount of power you are moving in. This is the amount of power you are disposing. This is the amount of power you are dispensing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Jesus is in the boat. Amen. The other side... <laughs> What is trying to stop you from going to the other side will either give way or the other side will come and meet you Amen. here. Are we together? Yes, sir. What is stopping you? What is trying to prevent you? I'm saying so because there are people whose duty is to fight people from getting to their destinies. There are people whose duties, whose assignment from the kingdom of darkness is to stand in the way of people with callings, in the way of people with destinies. Their duty is to stand and prevent them from getting there. Those people are called the storm. They are called the storm. They are called the storm. They come in only when you are about to cross. You did not hear about the storm until Jesus said, let us cross to the other side. You did not hear about any rage, any raging storm until when Jesus said, let us go to the other side. That is when the storm starts. So every time you see a storm in your life, know that it is time to go to the other side. Yeah. Every time you see a storm, just know that you are on the way to the other side. Yes, Glory to Yahweh. Amen. And the storm, like the devil always, the, the devil knows that Jesus is a dynamite, that Jesus is dynamis, that Jesus is power. The devil knows, but he does not give up. You have to know that. You carry Jesus, yes, but the devil will not go sleeping because you carry Jesus. He will come because he knows there is a time in your life that you are weak spiritually. He knows there is time in your life that you are weak. He needs to keep knocking and knocking. When men slept, the enemy saw the tears. When men were awake, the enemies could not saw the tears. So what happened? How did the enemy know that the men were sleeping? The enemy kept going and visiting, and visiting, and visiting, and seeing the people walking, seeing them tilling the soil, seeing them planting the seeds. The enemy kept going there, seeing them waiting. He kept going there. By the time they went to sleep, the enemy knew that he had an opportunity. That is what he does with us, my brother, my sister. He's always there. Looking for that weak moment, that moment of sleep. He knew that Jesus was in the boat. And he knew that Jesus is power. But he went to try. Hallelujah. Amen. And he began to fill the boat with water and rock the boat 
and caused the boat to look like it was going to overturn. And Jesus was asleep. Water kept entering the boat. Jesus was asleep. Hallelujah. The boat was shaking from left and right. Shout with me, Jesus was asleep. Hallelujah. Amen. No matter what the devil did, Jesus was asleep. Oh, my brother, my sister. What happens? What happens when you are in your house, your fortified house? You are sleeping and you hear a dog barking outside. If the noise cannot disturb you from sleeping, what do you do? You continue sleeping because it will end at nothing. Praise God. Amen. Jesus was asleep. The only thing that has the capacity to wake up Jesus is not the devil, but the disciples. You, 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 you. Only you can wake up Jesus Christ, not the devil. Only you can cause Jesus to wake up from sleep. Only you can change Jesus' direction. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is sleeping peacefully. He knows it's a dog barking at the passing train. What can a dog do to a passing train? There are many of such dogs that back at passing trains. You are progressing, they are backing. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the disciples now called him up. But they didn't call him politely. They said, don't you care that we perish? That was not polite. It was not polite. He cared, but he knew they were not going to perish. He knew nothing was going to happen to them. But because of their fear, they spoke impolitely. There is time that fear can cause you to become impolite and lose certain values. Praise God. Amen. That's why we need not be afraid. Jesus is in charge. Amen. Don't you care that we perish? And when I read this verse, I began to ask myself, you have the courage to talk to Jesus like that, but you fear the storm, which Jesus does not fear. Okay, let me say it again, maybe this way. I am saying that these people have courage to talk to big Jesus impolitely because they fear the small storm, which Jesus does not even feel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus does not feel the storm. They fear that some so much so that they began to talk to Jesus impolitely. And this is exactly what is happening in our life today. You see, there are people on YouTube, on social media. World Cup started today. They will not go for World Cup. They won't go. Are they going to ride on a donkey to go there? Even if we're a donkey, where's the donkey? They will not go. They are on internet. You know what they are waiting? To hear that a pastor has performed a miracle somewhere so that they go and examine and cross-examine the miracle and publish. They are waiting for false prophets. That's their only research. They can't research anything on science and teach people. Where is education? They can't research anything in medicines and teach people. Where is education? Nothing. All they can do is pastor, prophet, apostle. That is the employment they have. Even the World Cup that is news, five billion out of the seven billion people on earth are going to watch this World Cup. But those YouTubers, they are waiting to watch pastors. Praise the Lord. Amen. These are disciples of Jesus who cannot face the storm, but they are facing Jesus, who has authority over the storm. These people are in countries with bad governments, poor governments. You will not hear them one day stand up and say, this president is doing this which is wrong, or this minister is doing this, or this governor, or this. Never, they are afraid. I mean those YouTubers. They are afraid of these ministers and government officials to death, just like the disciples were afraid of the storm. But when it comes to Jesus, there's no fear. What do you call that? Ignorance. When you begin to fear a rat and think you can face a lion. When you fear attacking a rat and you believe you can kill a lion, 
What do you call that? Ignorance. Praise the Lord. The storm began to shake the, sh the boat. And they woke up Jesus. Jesus did not say three things. Peace be still. When did the storm begin to hear? So before that day, was the storm able to hear? So when Jesus speaks, situations develop ears. And that is why when you pray, trust in him. Because when he will speak, your situation will develop ears. Amen. He will develop ears in order to hear. And it is hearing in order to obey. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can't pretend that you are a situation that cannot hear Jesus Christ. You cannot pretend that you can't hear Jesus. Because when he speaks, you have to develop the hearing competencies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As Tom began to hear, for the first time, as Tom began to hear, because the master spoke. And this master, his own voice, that is why I said I discovered that when you pronounce the name of Jesus, it's a combination of dynamites, authority, all the authority and powers of heaven and on earth in one name. And we joke with that name. We clown with that name. We behave as, we, as, as if our brains have been taken out. My Lord and my God, Lord have mercy. The storm hurt Jesus Christ. I knew that it was a no-go zone. And I begin to speak to you right now. Amen. I say every storm in your life, Amen. every storm in your destiny, Amen. every storm in your family, Amen. every storm in your career, Amen. every storm in your future, Amen. let it be still Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let it be still in the wonderful name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let every storm be still. Amen. Be in financial storm, Amen. let it be still in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Be in the heart storm, let it be still in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever storm it is, I say peace and be still. Amen. You cannot pretend you will not hear me. You, you cannot pretend you don't hear. The, the, the voice of Jesus Christ, we, we will call the name Jesus. That name carries powers that brings into being Amen. things that were not before. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Immediately the storm calmed. As Jesus spoke, the storm calmed. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And I want you to believe it right now. That as Jesus speaks, your storm is calming. Amen. As he speaks, your storm is calming. Amen. Because there your storm hears Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever name that storm is, it hears Jesus. Amen. And it has to calm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It has to calm. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The storm had to be calm. The storm had to be still because it was going to be destroyed. So the storm that was going to destroy you is now afraid of its own life because it's going to be destroyed. Hallelujah. How do you like that? Those enemies that are looking for you, it is time for them to be still because they are going to be destroyed. Amen. Those enemies haunting you by day and by night, it is time for them to be still because they are going to be destroyed. Amen. The storm proves to be wise. That okay, the king of kings has spoken, the Lord of lords has spoken, I have to obey Amen. because I will be destroyed. Lastly, brethren, the storm is coming to distinguish you. The storm is coming to make a difference between you and the rest. Amen. You and the rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you see, when, 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 when the storm comes and people begin to cry and to, 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 to be thinking about what to do, when your own storm comes, it is the master that takes care of. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know that we Christians, we are privileged people? Because even in the days of slavery, right? The slave master was on top, he was the boss, and the slaves were below. And so the slaves worked for the master. But look at our situation. If there was a, if there was a storm in a boat of a slave master and there are slaves around, and the only solution could be brought about by the, by the slaves, what would the master do? He would tell the slaves, go do this so that the storm goes. Praise God. But we have a master 
who in a storm he is the one that takes charge for us Amen. oh glory to Jesus Amen. Christ he is exceptional Amen. Jesus is wonderful Amen. that so big so great so mighty he is but he serves us Amen. in times of trouble Amen. he says if you call upon me I will answer you I will deliver you in trouble because you have said your love upon me oh Jesus Christ